from here, what we want to enable to, to, to the users is to seamlessly import the JMEG RT generated models into Typhoon hardware in the loop simulators. So the idea is that for the user just to take the RT file, uh, load it into the into the model and be, be done with it, basically without any further modifications to the RT file. Today, I'm just going to, to sh uh, show a short demo of a permanent magnet synchronous machine motor drive in Typhoon Hill. And for that, we're going to be using the, these first two, uh, first two tools, so the schematic editor and the, and the Hill SCADA. So I'll open the schematic editor and I have the model that I'm going to simulate already prepared. I'll just go quickly through uh, to, to give you an overview of, of uh, how this works and, and what, what it looks like. So here on the left, uh, we have a library of components that we can uh, drag and drop. Uh, drag and drop and then connect uh, together to, to form a system that we want to simulate. So for example, for a motor drive with the JMAC machine, I want to have an inverter uh, connected to a machine. And on this DC link side, maybe I'll have a battery or a, or a source or anything. So the, the components then, uh, by double clicking on them, you can set the properties. For example, for the inverters, you can uh, designate which digital input pins are going to control which of the switches. Uh, you can import losses, you can enable uh, turn on and turn off delays and, and uh, similar. Uh, for basically all of the other components, it, it's a similar story. So for example, the permanent magnet synchronous machine that imports the JMEG RT files, basically expects an RTT file. Uh, you just provided a path, uh, provide the component a path to the RTT file that you want to, to simulate and uh, that, that's it. So then once you've made your system, uh, you can just compile and, and simulate it. So for today, uh, I'll just quickly go through the specifics of wh what we have prepared. And it's a simple motor drive, so we have a, a fixed voltage source in the DC link, a two-level inverter, and uh, a PMSM. Uh, in addition to that, we have these two blocks that, that are going to be used to, to simulate faults. So one contactor is going to be used to simulate uh, phase A loss, and the other one is going to uh, simulate a short circuit between phases B and C at the motor terminals across a uh, small, uh, small impedance. This, what, what you see here, so the components in black are basically simulated on the FPGA. So that, that is our power stage. So the voltage source, the inverter, the machine, and these contactors here, the, the measurements and the contactors here that, that simulate the losses. Uh, the, inverter is switching at 10 kilohertz switching frequency and the control signals because i'm not using an, a real controller actually come from the uh, from the signal processing parts of the library and the uh, actual pwm generator is uh, one fpga module inside the the hill device that generates uh, my pwm signals uh, in addition to this, I have the real-time calculation of switching and conduction losses and some thermal properties of the switching modules uh, enabled uh, to, to simulate. Uh, <clears throat> these properties of the switches are uh, imported through XML files that contain all the, uh, all the relevant data so the thermal characteristics and the, the losses characteristics of the switches and the diodes. And these files are typically available on, on semiconductor manufacturer websites. So in case you, you have a specific switch and you have its the design data, 
you can just uh, given in an XML format you can just uh, import it into Typhoon and I have two of these prepared so once you've imported them you can you will have these properties below filled and you can do some modifications if necessary Similarly, uh, the thermal uh, properties of the switches are uh, simulated with these uh, with these characteristics. And then on the outside, uh, I have a thermal network component that actually simulates the the heatsink for the switching module. So for each of the switches, for each of the diodes and the IGVTs, I have uh, one uh thermal network and each thermal network is represented by a two branch uh, cower model i feed the output temperatures of the cases into the thermal model for the uh, into the losses model for the switches and that so i create the the loop okay and then uh, for the motor as i've mentioned the uh, jmeg PMSM actually expects an RTT file to be uh, loaded. So I will choose the same one that uh, VED was working on. So it's one of the example uh, models from the JMEG, J JMEG website. Uh, this specific model in, in this point in time only supports the LDLQ as I mentioned in the presentation. Uh, so that means that we model the saturation of fluxes in the D and Q axis currents as functions uh, of fluxes in D and Q axis as functions of uh, D and Q axis currents. Okay, then once I've selected the, the file with the motor data I want to simulate, uh, I will choose the LDLQ option, click OK, and th that should be uh, the settings. And then, uh, as I said, the controller is actually simulated in the signal processing, so there is no real controller uh, for this demo. What we do, what we have is a simple PI control loop uh, that regulates the speed of the motor and the output of the loop is the reference for the Q axis current. Uh, and we have the D axis current reference uh, free, to, free to change. Okay, then once we've done, we're done with the with setting up the model uh, as we are here, uh, you can just click compile, and all the uh, all the files necessary for the real time simulation will be generated, and then we can move to to the hill scale. So it takes a couple of minutes to pre-process the RT file data to be suitable for the uh, for the real time simulation. So I'll just uh, click the compile button when we move to, to the SCADA and show you later. But I have the compilation report here and I just want to highlight that this model is going to be simulated with a 500 nanoseconds uh, time step. Okay, then I'll just click the con compile button and I'll move on to, to the kill SCADA, which again, I already have uh, opened and, and prepared for the simulation and I'll just give a quick overview as I did for the schematic editor. So this would be the what, what you see when you first load uh, your model into the hill SCADA. So you have an empty panel which uh, you can populate with the widgets from the left to make a custom user interface that you that will allow you to control the the simulation to add, uh, introduce the disturbances to the system and also to to observe uh, what, what's going on in the system. Uh, then first here on the right in the right part we have uh, these buttons under model controls. So these allow us to uh, set the uh, for example. To, to set, for example, the voltages of the voltage sources in the simulation, we can override the contactor uh, and uh, switches gating signals so we can force them to be always on or always off. That's how we actually simulate 
the defaults uh, in this demo. Then we can set some initial conditions for the machine models. And uh, we can also uh, control the inputs to the, uh, to the signal processing uh, parts of the circuit. In addition to that, we have the output controls which allow us to send analog and digital uh, signals that are going to be fed to the, to the controller. Basically, in this case, we would, if we had a real controller, we would probably have uh, currents as outputs, as feedbacks for the controller, and in addition to that, some uh, encoder signals. Okay, and from the widgets on the right, uh, on the left side, uh, basically you can do uh, anything that you can do with the model controls. It just allows you to make the interface custom. And I'll move back to, to my already prepared uh, SCADA panel and I'll just quickly go through it. So behind each of these, uh, each of the widgets is basically a snippet of Python code that uses Typhoon's API. And you don't actually need to know the, the API commands. You can just uh, insert all all that you need using the uh, using the code editor here so it, it, it's made to be really easy to use uh, and you, you can really you know make a lot of it without actually knowing all the all the details okay i won't save this one so basically starting from here top left i can set the uh, rotation speed reference for the speed controller. Below it, I can set the D-axis current reference. Uh, continuing below, we observe the inverter and diode junction, uh, the IGBT and diode junction temperatures on the trace graphs, and also observe the case uh, temperatures for the IGBTs and the diodes uh, in, in these displays. Then in the middle, we have some information about a motor uh, we observe the speed on the trace graph and the, on the gauge. We uh, measure the uh, torque. We can set the low torque, torque for the motor. Uh, we observe the RMS line currents and the D and Q axis current references and, and the measured values. And here uh, on the right side, uh, we have a couple of buttons that allow us to simulate a phase loss a B, uh, short circuit between B and C terminals, and we can simulate a breakdown of individual IGBTs. So I'll start the simulation and, and show you around. So I'll give the controller some reference speed, so 1463, and you can see how the, the uh, speed increases. So the load is still low. We have some low currents, but uh, I can increase it maybe and then you can observe how the temperatures of the uh, switching modules and, and the cases uh, react to it. So I can increase this some more and you can see the, the, uh, the, the currents are, are growing. And one thing that I didn't touch upon is uh, the capture scope widget that basically allows us to capture the signals directly from the simulator and uh, it allows us to to really dive into the signal because the resolution of the captured signals is up to uh, the resolution of the simulation time step and uh, here i'll just maybe trigger to capture the data for a step change in, in the torque load. So I'll go from, I don't know, 113 that is now to, to some lower value, uh, like for example, 10. And I'll trigger on the electrical torque. So maybe I'll have the threshold at 50, falling edge, arm the trigger. 
uh, I'll minimize this for now and I can say, okay, let's go back to 10 to, to see what happens. And we, we can see that again, the uh, we have some disturbance in the speed, which is regulated, but also since the currents are lower, the junction temperatures uh, also fall down. And we, we can see uh, how our controller reacted to, to this scenario. Basically, uh, at zero is when we applied the, the step in the torque load. And we can see we have some uh, slight overshoot in the Q-axis current, and we can see that uh, for a while, our uh, motor speed really, really jumped up. Okay, and similarly, I'll just show a couple more scenarios. So here I'll uh, maybe capture what, what's, what goes on, you know, when we uh, introduce a, a phase A loss in the, in the system. So I'm going to, to trigger to the state of this contactor that uh, simulates the phase loss. Uh, okay, arm the trigger and let's see what happens. So you can see here at, in the gauge that the uh, current of phase A is zero and le let's see how it looks like over here. So the controller is very simple, so there, there are no protections uh, of any kind, it just tries to, to keep the, the speed uh, that, that that's given as a reference and we see when the phase loss occurs that the uh, a phase current goes to zero and then b and c behave like this we can see the d and q axis currents and what happens to to the machine torque okay i'm going to yeah uh, go back to to normal state and again uh, just capture the signals to see if everything's fine. Okay, so I'm back here and maybe I'll just uh, also trigger on uh, on the short circuit contactor just to see what happens when we introduce a short circuit. Okay, and again, uh, okay, sorry. So this is where our short circuit occurs. And we, we can see again that the controller doesn't actually, you know, react to it in, a, in any particular way. Okay, uh, clear all the faults. And yeah, that, that's, that's it basically. So uh, this was just a short demo to, 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 to showcase how to import the JMEG RT model files and what you can do with them later in the in the simulation.